So my video on sex and gender has received its fair amount of quality criticism, which I have done my best to censor. So that was fun. Um, I learned a few things. Number one, uh, I don't understand science, but a guy on the internet who doesn't understand consent or copyright law is an expert. Yeah, Baring has those things wrong. He was pretty much an idiot on those subjects. But is your video a response to Baring or is it a response to a bunch of people? Number two, there are only two sexes. The rest are deformities. Deformities? Well, I certainly wouldn't call it a deformity. But it's certainly not very common. It's certainly something that's very, very rare. It's certainly something that is not normal. In 2014, on Black Friday, I went to the South Center Mall and saw a stupid sign. Lamest tagline ever. The reason why this sign is so stupid is because you can't do both of those things at the same time. If you stand out, you're not going to fit in. If you fit in, you're not going to stand out. Now, someone can stand out and be popular because they stood out, but it's not because they fit in. There seems to be a number of people out there who are promoting social justice, who seem to think that you can do both of these things at the same time, that you can be normal and weird at the same time. It's like you want all the benefits of being normal and all the benefits of being weird. Well, you can't have both of those things at the same time. Choose or have a little bit of both but you can't have the extremes of both. It's just not gonna happen. I see nothing wrong with being weird. I see nothing wrong with not being normal. I see nothing wrong with being abnormal. If statistically something is uncommon, there's nothing wrong with pointing out that it's not common. You can't shove forth that something that is uncommon is normal. That just doesn't make any sense. I know this is hard for some of you to look at the concept that you can't be normal and abnormal at the same time. You can't have the positive things of being both normal and abnormal at the same time. And I just wish some of you would get this through your heads. If you don't want to be normal, then be weird. But don't complain then that you're being treated like you're not normal. And if you're boring and mundane and normal, don't complain that people aren't treating you like you're not normal. It's pretty simple. Uh, three, I learned a new word, uh, and that word is trans-trender. Now, what the fuck does that mean? When you talk about the term trans-trending as if you've never heard it before, as if you've learned a new word, it makes me think that you're a fraud. You can't possibly have been on this platform over the past year and not heard that term before, especially if you are in the circles that you're in. Now granted, maybe you're saying this just to try to make more of an emotional point about it or something like that, but it's not doing you well here. It's not, I'm sorry. You might rightly ask, well, dear friend, let's ask the internet. As you can see here, Urban Dictionary defines trans trender as a person who identifies as male or female but does not experience any gender dysphoria. It can also mean someone who identifies as male or female because they think it's trendy slash cool. There are a number of people out there who are into that whole fit in, stand out sort of thing. Companies wouldn't make that their tagline if that wasn't the case. Uh, the first thing I found hilarious about this word is the people who use this term are probably the same people who get upset at SJWs for making up new words. You're probably right. I'll give you that. <laughs> and the second, which is uh, not so funny, it's just straight up transphobic. The assertion that you're not trans unless you experience gender dysphoria is just plain wrong. There are many types of things that are trends. And these trends come and go. Different fads come and go. Right now, the phrase transvestite is seriously, seriously demonized. 
It used to be something that someone could just say and say, oh yeah, I'm a transvestite. Yeah, I like to dress in women's clothing. And people are like, oh, okay. There are some people who obviously would make a big deal about it, but I've probably understated that a little bit. It's only been like the past 30 years that this sort of thing has gained really any acceptance. It's still considered one of the most unacceptable things for a guy to show feminine qualities. Um, it's getting better. It's always getting better. But it's still looked at very, very, very negatively. The guy is supposed to match the gender role that is assigned to them by society. And if they go outside of that, they're given a really hard time. So yeah, that still does occur. But it is a lot more accepted for someone to just be like, well, yeah, I, I like to dress this way, I like these things, than to make people feel bad for not using certain terms. But the way things are anymore, you can't just be a transvestite. But it seems that someone being a transvestite has never really gotten that much more accepted than it was in the 80s. Uh, which is kind of sad. It should have gotten a lot more acceptance, but it hasn't. Um, drag queens have gotten a bit more accepted, and that's primarily because of RuPaul. And there have been a couple movies like uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. The way that it is anymore, it ends up being some people on the very far end of the progressive left and people who call themselves a proponents of social justice who are against someone considering themselves a transvestite. They're like, well, that's an archaic word. That's, that's a legacy word. You shouldn't word it that way. <laughs> You're supposed to use one of these new words. People can't just simply like having the appearance of the gender that's the opposite of what they were born as. It's just not allowed in the social justice uh, side of things. Anyone who says the word transvestite is demonized just for saying the word. Now, if there are a lot of people who just want to go outside the fashion standards and, you know, visually and even maybe the way they act, want to go outside the social standards for what they're supposed to be, if they're a man or a woman, why should they have to associate with one of these new trans phrases? Well, that's the element about this, that it's a trend. That's the element about this that makes some people a trans trender. Now, I must admit, I do find the notion of someone who is transsexual not having gender dysphoria, that's really pushing things. That's pretty out there. In fact, the definition of these things was recently changed in the DSM so that trans folk would no longer be classed as mentally ill. Official positions have nothing to do with whether or not someone might be a trans trender. To me, an example of a trans trender would be Chris Crocker. Chris Crocker was a transvestite, and he might still be a transvestite. It's just something that he enjoys doing. For a while, he was caught up in all of this trending stuff where he was trying to say that he was transsexual. Well, then he changed his mind on this because he realized he likes being a guy, but he also likes dressing as a woman. What's wrong with that? Well, nothing's wrong with that, but you can't label it transvestite or you get demonized. See, there, there's nothing wrong with someone wanting to dress differently. There's nothing at all wrong with that. And I think some of the standards that we put on clothing, oh, well, this is a man's clothing and this is a woman's clothing, I, I think it's, I think some of this stuff is kind of silly. Some of it maybe not so much. Um, some of it, some of the clothing out there is designed to accentuate certain shapes. 
Usually a guy has a certain type of shape. Usually a woman has a certain type of shape. And these types of clothing try to accentuate those things. But outside of that, a lot of these standards out there are, are kind of silly, honestly. Um, at least as far as I'm concerned. It all has to do with tradition, you know. But what's wrong with someone being a transvestite? Well, it's not politically correct, according to social justice. It's not something that you should say. You should word it differently. You should, you should join the clan of, of this attempt to make people feel bad unless they word things the right way. Similar to how back in the 70s, homosexuality had its definition changed so that homosexuals were not classed as mentally ill. Basically, you can be trans and not experience gender dysphoria, which is a disturbance or distress which can arise as a result of one's trans nature. So someone can feel like they're in the wrong body without feeling like they're in the wrong body? Granted, I don't think that's what you probably meant. You're probably saying that those who have body dysphoria, which I guess is different than body dysmorphia, which I don't quite know the difference between them yet. And it has been described that you don't seem to know the difference between those things either. But body dysphoria is when someone is stressed about feeling like they're not in the right body. What is the word to describe when someone feels like they're not in the right body? What is that phrase? Because if someone feels that they are not the gender that their sex is, then what do you call that? And how could someone possibly be trans if they don't have any negative feelings or about the body that they're in? And then at that point, where do we draw that line? If someone just doesn't look the way they would prefer to look, would that be classified the same way? I don't know. Some even posit that societal pressures, norms, and expectations can be part of the reason why some trans folk experience gender dysphoria. If you're talking about people feeling bad or people feeling some sort of sense of shame because of society, then yes, you're right. You're right. But as far as someone feeling like they're not in the right body, what does society have to do with that? Now, if someone doesn't feel like they're in the wrong body, but they just have certain likes and dislikes and ways they like to dress and carry themselves, what does that actually have to do with being trans? I mean, I like being fat and I like to flaunt it. I wear shirts that let my gut hang out the bottom. I like being musky. I like to know that I can almost, uh, it's like I can mark my territory everywhere I go without having to piss on anything. You know, I like that. Does that mean I'm trans-animalistic? Does that mean I'm, you know, before I was heavy, was I trans-fat? I mean, where is the line? The line isn't being drawn. This is why people make some of these comparisons that they do. You know, where is the line? And if you can't define that line, you can't blame people for bringing up extremes. And the second part is equally as stupid. Who are you to decide whether someone is doing something because it's trendy or cool? Well, you're right about that. And the best that people could do is guess. And the guess is probably going to be wrong. Why are you the one who decides if someone is a real trans or, you know, like a fake trans? There are obviously some people out there who bring this stuff up to try to shame others. There are other people who try to bring this up who are trying to say, hey, um, there seems to be a trend going on here. And there seems to be some people who are being made very confused by all of this stuff. The way this stuff gets talked about is very confusing to people. To say that, oh, well, peop a lot of people are confused, I think that's a fair statement. 
I think there are a lot of people who are confused. And life is tough enough for young people in trying to find their identity in general. We're all trying to find our identity. And this stuff doesn't make that any easier. This stuff makes it infinitely more complex. So during a time when people are already struggling, this stuff makes them struggle even more. There are obviously going to be some people who aren't really going to know where they fit into all these new terms and these new words that get brought up. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of those people who uh, say they know what real racism is, and it's not the things that they're doing that is causing people to call them racist. So you're going to mention something that would normally be something people could use to prove you wrong, and you're going to try to use it to prove you right? Um... Whether someone is racist or not doesn't have to do with how they feel about whether they're racist or not. It has to do with their actions. Uh, it has to do with how they look at people. It has to do with what they defend. It has to do with a number of things. And that person themselves may not consider themselves racist. In fact, there are very few people out there, out there, there are very few people out there who actually call themselves racist. Um, I don't see how this is helping your case here. I, I, I really don't. You're, you're bringing up something that could be used to prove you wrong, and you're trying to use it to prove you right. That's a very strange uh, method you're using there, man. That's very strange. It's actually the people who are calling them racist who are the racist ones. Someone on Twitter actually said to me that there are more trans trenders than actual trans folk. I mean, how could you possibly know that? How, how, how would you, uh, what? <laughs> I'm certainly not going to make that claim, but how do you know that it's not true? What do you have to prove that uh, the large majority, the overwhelming majority, of people who are talking about this stuff, where this is a trending topic, um, how do you know that what that person said is not true? What proof do you have? We don't have any proof either way. It's all conjecture. What? 